Here are my tools that I'll be using for this demo. Alizarin Crimson, Hanson Yellow Medium, Pyrrole Orange and Windsor Blue. On Archer's cold pressed paper, I pre-wet parts of it with a Haki brush. Using my dagger brush, I flick in the yellow first, then the pyrrole orange and let them all run together. I manipulate the paint to a degree with the dagger brush. I flick the paint on as well and just see what happens. While the paint is still quite wet, I get down pretty close to the board and I blow with my drinking straw to make some exciting marks. Remember to direct the straw marks wherever you want them to go. If you don't, it could be just a crazy mess of lines going everywhere. I now start introducing alizarin crimson to the mix, dancing my way through with the dagger brush, splattering as well. Now I'm using Windsor Blue and I've pre-mixed it a little bit on my palette with the, with the yellow. You must be careful that it doesn't dirty up your page by putting green on top of that alizarin crimson colour. It might go a bit muddy. So unless you want that, be careful about where you place the bluey green colour. A little bit of mud is okay, especially if you've got some bright colours, but just be careful. I dry the work now and this is what I have as a result. I've turned the page from every vantage point and decide on trees and I'm using a 2B pencil and I'm going to just draw in a few linear marks so I've got some guides. I never put a pencil line through white paper. I try to keep that white clean as long as I can. So some of the white areas that I'm saving could be on the tree trunks themselves and some could be in the background. And then when I start my negative painting, I have to decide what to take into the negative painted areas and what to leave white. I start with just about three or four trees to begin with and the painting will start to evolve from those. I don't have any reference in front of me. This is all made up. As it turns out, it looks like I'm going to have two fairly predominant trees. So I decide to cross a small one in the background with the front one. Now I'm using negative painting to start to bring the edges of my trees forward. My mixtures of color are alizarin crimson, windsor blue and the yellow all mixed together and I'm using the dagger brush. You have to be strategic about what colour is going to go over another colour. Be very careful about that. I'm using my thirsty brush which is the number 8 black velvet series that I love and I'm just using clean water in it, just a damp brush, and I roll it into the paint until it soaks up some of the colour. This is making ghost-like trees for me, and I'll be able to work to those later on with some negative painting to make the edges of them stand out a bit more. It's nice because I'm still seeing the winds of blue showing through when I lift out this colour, which is a nice play against all the oranges that I've got going. At a certain point when the paint is slightly damp, I use my palette knife to cut back into the paint and make other linear marks to create depth. You will notice I only use the first half inch of the round shaped palette knife. I don't use a sharp palette knife. And I always have a tissue or a paper towel in my other hand and I swipe and then wipe. Gradually more negative painting is introduced and I'm once again trying to make my tree shape stand out but also imply some sort of foliage grasses or rocks or whatever might, might come to mind when you're in a forest scene. 
there's another big tree on the left hand side of this one so I'm now going to start bringing that into focus and the colors I'm using really just the the three colors that I started with but in different degrees some of them I might add a little bit more red to some I might add a bit more blue to and you notice I am diminishing the whites a little bit and that's the artist's prerogative once you get rid of the whites though you can't get them back it is difficult so don't be too excited about getting rid of all those whites it's that's what keeps your painting fresh a little bit of blotting with my paper towel although I don't do that very often and now a little bit more scraping with my palette knife swipe and wipe just reconstructing the anatomy of that tree it looked a bit strange at the bottom while the paint's wet I can blot it out a bit and here is what I have so far now I need to get to the top part of my painting using my dagger brush I'm going to put some marks in that indicate foliage so obviously this is a green but I've mixed it with my yellow and my winter blue I'm flicking the paint on and I'm using the tip of my brush just to make some exciting little marks that'll help me to feel more foliage like in my painting a little bit darker mix it's still the green I've used um, Windsor, Windsor blue with that yellow but a lot more Windsor blue with it and I've added a little bit of alizarin crimson as well and that helps to make it a nice uh, shadowy green this one has even more alizarin crimson in it so it becomes quite a dark shadow color a lot of watercolorists don't want to go this dark but it helps to make your colors look cleaner if you've got a good value change going on within your painting look for contrast all the time these are all the elements of design a little bit of line a little bit of value a little bit of color movement all those things along with the shapes that you're implying are all elements of design now a little bit more palette knife work and then we start to get on to the left hand side of the painting into my white shapes I drew some pencil marks to give me a guide for trees and now I'm starting to work on each individual trunk a light color first I'm using my round brush and I just start with the light color and then introduce some of the other colors for the shadow side of the trees while the paint's wet all those colors will merge and it's rather lovely to watch I'm just using a liner or a little rigger brush to go along the edge of the tree trunk there's that really dark color that I used in the foliage of the tree before a little bit more alizarin crimson to it in places and in some places a little bit more Windsor blue I know my watercolor is going to dry two or three shades lighter so I'm pretty pretty safe to be like a daredevil with this color for the moment and while I've got my little liner in my hand I start to imply a couple of branches coming up from the sides of the trees occasionally You notice that my trees go in and out of some of the marks that were made right from the very start when I first dropped in the paint and that kind of gives it a little bit of depth it feels almost like there's foliage in front of the trees occasionally I'm using my palette knife to create some other branch like elements coming out from the trunk and now I'm, I'm using my negative painting with Windsor Blue quite watered down because Windsor Blue is so strong and that's going into some of the little negative spaces I'm diminishing my whites a little bit now uh, I added a little bit more alizarin crimson to that mix for the very dark colors 
and gradually we start piecing the whole painting together. What am I going to keep? What am I going to take out? What works for me and what doesn't? That orange mark doesn't work for me. I'm not sure yet what to do with it, but I think I'm going to have to cut back over the top of it so that it's not so obvious. And there it goes, just a little bit less of it showing and that's more pleasing to me. Using my round brush to do the thirsty brush technique, soak up some of the swamp. And then back to the top of the painting where the foliage needs to be addressed again to blend in with the other side. So it's a mixture of all my colours and I'm using my dagger brush. This brush is the most magic brush for making marks for you. Now I'm introducing some foliage on the left hand side of the uh, painting and I'm using a lemon green colour. Then I've added a little bit more warmth to it so that the lemon isn't too acidic. And I'm gradually infiltrating that warmth through that back line. I'm still leaving a lot of whites though. I don't take every white out. That's what I think a lot of people have trouble with. Now this is two pieces of x-rays, old x-rays. I put them together, leaving a bit of a gap, and I sponge out to make negative marks throughout the painting. Um, now I'm working on the actual big trees and doing a little bit of positive painting to create a third dimension to the tree. I start with light colours first, exactly the same way as I did the background and then I introduce a little bit of a dark colour to contrast against it. I'm saving the whites until I'm absolutely sure that I don't need them anymore. Now I'm starting to introduce some of that warmth into the white areas in degrees of value, not all dark values. Be careful about putting a warm across the top of a dark cool that's just going to make mud. So I have to be strategic where I place them. And I use a tissue just to blot it a little bit. Now it's time to work on the form of the other large tree. cast shadows and a little bit of light flashes, anything that's going to make it a little bit more believable as a tree. And it's all about trying to tie the painting together now, uh, just reinforcing some of the darks and middle values, some of the negative painting, the marks that I put in before, and assessing if they're going to work for me or not. On the right hand side foreground area it was very white so I decided to do some splatter and then just uh, soften some of the marks back with fresh water. Now I'm reinforcing some of my negative painting while that's drying in the foreground, punching up the darks a little bit more and now the excitement begins because I like that blue contrast. So I've mixed a little bit of white uh, gouache with my Windsor Blue and I'm flicking it on with my dagger brush. I soften back some of the marks and I add a few deliberately with my little brush. And here's the end result. I hope you like this. It was a fun demo and please come back and visit me again. Bye bye.